What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a brand new extension from Daniel Tal for creating cityscapes and streetscapes inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Urban Paint is a tool from Daniel Tal that's specifically designed to quickly help you generate streetscapes in SketchUp. And so it's a really cool tool in the sense that what it does is it allows you to basically select from a number of different options in order to generate these detailed streetscapes. So you can do everything from just picking like streets and roads and nothing else, um, all the way through being able to um, generate these incredibly detailed streetscapes that include like planter media and buildings placed on the outside, just depending on what you're wanting to do. And so this also comes with a library of different models useful for this application. So everything from like trees and benches to um, the buildings, the massing buildings that go on the outside, those are all contained inside of this extension. And so Urban Paint is designed to be more of a professional tool. So it's not necessarily a hobby tool. So from a pricing standpoint, it's a one-time cost of $129. Note that Daniel did give me a copy of this extension to try out. Um, this isn't an affiliate link or anything like that, just a cool new SketchUp tool. Um, and I love covering those on the channel. Um, he did offer a 40% off discount to viewers of the channel using code UP40. So if you are interested in urban paint, that's actually a pretty steep discount on what the list price on this is. So if you do want to check that out, you can just go to this page and then in the discount code box, enter the code UP40. But now let's jump over into SketchUp and take a look at how this works. And so it's actually pretty slick the way that he's got this designed. So all you have to do is just generate a path. So in this case, I've just drawn a line and this line is like 2000 feet long. So it's pretty big. You can see that compared to my default model right here. And you can see how long that line is. But when you wanna first start generating a profile, what you can do is you can come in here and you can click on the option for build urban paint profile. And this is just gonna walk you through all of the different things um, that are in here as options. So like for example, you can pick a symmetrical or an asymmetrical profile. You can set a number of lanes. So if you wanted just to be like four lanes or eight lanes, you could do that. Most everything in here is fairly adjustable. But in this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna not include striping because we're gonna include the median. But you've also got options in here for different kinds of parking. So you can either put just regular parking in here with width, or you can also add um, different kinds of parking depending on what you want your profile to be. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and go with the stall right here. And we'll leave the bike lane off. You've got some options in here for the curb. You can also just toggle the curb off if you don't want to include the curb. And then you've also got the median options. And so the median options actually give you a number of different options, everything from a planter median, where you can set the width of the wall of the planter and the height of the wall um, to just a regular stripe median. You could also do a barrier wall if you wanted to do that. We'll go with the planter median for right now. And note that there's a checkbox right here. And so if you want, you can include trees in your planter. And so notice how I can click in here like this and I can select the different trees that are placed in here. So for example, where I live, the palm trees wouldn't make sense, so I would remove those. And I probably don't want evergreens in here as well. Those are probably gonna be just deciduous trees. But then once you're done with that, you can just move on to the next option right here, which is the walks on the side, which are adjustable. So you can adjust if they are attached or detached. You can also set what's contained in those areas. So you can set if it's gonna be trees or lawns, if it's gonna be planters, if it's gonna be an amenity zone like this, um, and also the kind of walk that gets placed in there. So we'll include tree grates, we'll include pedestrian lights and benches, just like this, um, and maybe parking meters. But now I'm gonna move on and this is gonna allow me to set what kind of buildings go on the side right here. And so notice how when you click in here, you can select either individual buildings or you can also select or deselect the whole collection in here. And note that there's a number of different building masses contained in here. So everything from like a mixed use and a multiple housing buildings through those single family homes. But then you've also got a number of different building massings in here, which you can go through and you can select 
or not. And you can see how there's a ton of different options in here um, for different buildings that are different heights. So um, depending on what you want this to do, you can select whatever you want in here. So for this one, for example, I might set this to be um, just the shorter buildings like this. And then one thing that you're going to want to pay attention to, and I highly recommend that you go ahead and do um, create a few of these, is you're going to want to save that because then you can load it later and you don't have to go through all these options again. So in this case, I might save this one as small commercial road profile or something like that. We're going to go ahead and click on save. We're going to click on build profile. And what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's actually going to generate that inside of SketchUp, um, adding those massing models in here like this, but it's also going to generate your parking lines and everything else that um, you need in here when you generate this road. All right, and so one of my favorite features in this tool is we've gone ahead and we've generated this row of buildings right here, but say that you had another street over here. Well, what you could do is you could just draw a line across here. I'm gonna select that line, and in this case, instead of going through all those options again, I'm just going to go over to the Load Urban Paint Profile option, and we'll go ahead and we'll pick the small commercial road profile, and I'm gonna click on Build Profile. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here, and that's actually going to build an intersection of our road right here. So whenever those road lines intersect, this is actually gonna come in here and it's going to build an intersection, which is really cool. And so let's say that we did this again, but I wanna make some changes to that intersection. And note that this is something that's noted as being in beta in here. But if we look at this, um, notice how you have the option to do either stop signs or traffic lights and you can include the pedestrian crossing in here as well. So say we wanted this to have stop signs instead, we could just adjust that and then click on build profile. And this is gonna build this out with a four-way stop in here, just like this. So this is actually really cool um, from giving you the ability to quickly create roads and intersections. And so one thing that I might try a little bit later is I might try bringing this in and tracing the roads on an actual like Google map or Google location right here um, in order to try to generate those roads quickly. And so you can get lots of different looks in here. Like for example, I came in here and I added an urban high rises. And this is basically a preset that has the high rise building selected, but not the low rise like this. Um, and it's got everything else already set up. So I went through and I set up all of my different options. But when I build that profile, notice how this is going to give me something that's much more like urban and high rise. So you can create kind of like a downtown area really quickly. And so you might create one of these that maybe doesn't have the buildings quite as tall, but you can see how building this more like urban road um, is pretty easy in here. Now I would probably want multiple lanes in there. That's just something that you can adjust in your overall settings. Um, so maybe if I was to undo this, load that profile in, and in this case, instead of two lanes, I'm gonna set it to four lanes right here. And I might set my lane width to something wider, so maybe like 14 feet. But then if I build that profile, notice how quick and fast it was to make that adjustment to give me that wider road right here. And so one thing that's kind of cool about this is it does pair pretty well with SketchUp's diffusion that they added. So say for example that I had this diffusion in here and I wanted to create a quick like AI render. There's an aerial master plan function in here that actually works really well with this. If I click on the generate function right here, that's going to generate an aerial master plan view based on these buildings. So for quick conceptual type stuff, this is actually really fast. Um, and it gives you the ability to at least like ideate a little bit inside of SketchUp itself. And so you can see how this one did pretty good. The, the one area where this gets a little bit weird is it doesn't always recognize the roads very well. But I think uh, for just getting kind of an idea of what something like this might look like, this is actually a really cool function. And so let's say that we wanted to generate more house models instead of urban models like these uh, these high-rise buildings. So I've set up one of these that has more houses, so a residential neighborhood with houses only, but I'm gonna build that profile in here and notice that that can actually build this with those single family homes. Now, one thing to pay attention to is notice how this is very like 
segmented in here. That's because I didn't adjust the number of segments in my curve before I did this. So what that means is that means that your road's not gonna be as smooth. But if I do the same thing over here, so maybe set this segment to 48 so that it's smoother and then I run this. And in this case, I just want this to have the stop signs, but I can build that profile. And that's going to build a residential neighborhood in here, just like this. And so you can also do this with multiple intersections. So for example, say that I took this curve right here and I went ahead and I generated a residential neighborhood in here. Well, I can take this curve, which I'm gonna make smoother, by the way, and do the same thing with this one. But I could generate a series of houses along this curve right here, and then I could do the same thing over here. And this is gonna build multiple intersections. So this gives you the ability to generate multiple intersections um, off of one profile right here like this. And so one of the cool things about this is it also gives you access to that library of items to place in here. So if I click on entourage item placement, this is going to give me the ability to access the models that are in that library. So say I wanted to add this bench right here or right here, I can just click on done. And that's going to allow me to access that library object. So you can bring in any of those library objects really quickly just by selecting them from the drop down right here. And so we've also got the ability to add individual buildings. So if I wanted to pick a building, right, like maybe I wanted one of these three or four story massings that are in here, I can go ahead and I can pick one like this one and click on done and I can place that right here. So this gives you access to that full library of different buildings in here. And then the other thing is there's also a tool in here for generating parking lots quickly. And so this is a very simple tool. You just come in here and you just pick a length like this, then you pick a width, and this is gonna actually generate a parking lot based on that. Now there's not a whole lot of settings or anything like that that you can adjust with the parking lot. It's all kind of preset, but this does give you the ability to quickly generate parking areas inside of your 3D space. And then after the fact, I don't know, I think you could probably do a view hidden geometry and just pick up this edge and then move it over. So it's, and so it's not really adjustable in the sense that you can't like live adjust this and have the parking spaces adjust, but you can pick up that geometry and kind of move it around and make things larger or smaller um, just by moving the lines around like this. And so another application that I think is interesting for this is you could set this up to just generate your roads as well. So for example, I've created one of these that just creates a four lane road and I've only selected the road options. Well, if I click on the option for build profile, that's going to generate just a road in here, which is a pretty cool option. And you could do that with an arc or curve as well. So if you did just want a road, you could use this in order to generate that really quickly. And you could also use this to generate a road that has a uh, highway dividers on it. So if I was to pick this, I'm gonna load this one, but then down below, I'm going to include the median, but put it in here as a median barrier wall like this. So if I build this, what this is gonna do is this is actually going to include those barriers in here. So you could use this in order to quickly generate a road that's got just that divider barrier in here. Now, one thing that I think would be interesting um, is having the ability to include those barriers on the outside as well, because then you've got the ability to generate things like, uh, like highways inside of SketchUp. Not that you couldn't just take this collection of barriers Use the move tool in copy mode and move it over. Like this. So pretty easy workaround because this is already set up to follow along with your road, but you could use this as just kind of like a full on road generator in SketchUp as well. All right, so super interesting tool, obviously fairly niche um, and definitely designed for more professionals than hobbyists, but I can definitely see some places where this would be super helpful, especially if you do generate a lot of roads or work with urban design or um, that kind of design. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I will link to this tool in the notes down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video.
Thanks, guys.